What is the heart of storytelling? And why should you incorporate it into all of your presentations? Well, the answer to that question will be found in your next Daily Dose of Public Speaking Wisdom. I'm coming to you from outside of Orlando, Florida. I'm attending a two-day storytelling boot camp with one of my be uh, biggest and best clients. It's fitting that I'm here at this event to share my seventh C to sensational storytelling. You've heard about the first six, compelling characters in relatable circumstances who uh, face increasing conflict until they reach the climax of their, their journey, which is where they learn the lesson, which leads to a change in that person's life that all centers around your carry out message. Many speakers will include some form of the first six. What most leave out is the seventh crucial step, and that is conversations, or commonly referred to as dialogue. Why is dialogue or conversation important to a story? Think about the average narrative that you hear from most presenters. They go into what I call reporter mode, and I'll use one of my stories as an example. The night I learned about the power of story and presentations, I was a certified financial planner. I was presenting a workshop to a room full of women. As soon as the program started, I could tell something was wrong. And after five minutes, I decided to stop the presentation and address the issue. And what I discovered was that a previous speaker had essentially given a long sales pitch, and this had the women pretty doubtful and skeptical of my intentions. At first, I was pretty mad about this. And then I got scared. I thought, oh my gosh, I've invested $1,200 to, to buy all this food and, and wine and, and just have a good evening, and this is, this is becoming a disaster. Right then, I, I thought of this experience I'd had with my mom about 20 years earlier. It was one of the catalysts for me getting into the financial business. It was relating an experience she had had uh, with trying to get money and start a business and the struggle she had as a woman. Well, once I shared that story, the entire demeanor and the atmosphere in the room changed. The women accepted me. We went on to have a great meeting. Question, was that a compelling story? Did anything in there have you on the edge of your seat or feeling entertained, wanting to hear more? Well, I can answer no to those questions, and I was the one telling it. That's what I call reporter mode. It's fairly dull. It's fact-based. When I say reporter mode, it's as if I'm standing on the street corner and holding a microphone like a TV news reporter and saying, this happened and that happened and here he was and there she was and fact, 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 fact. No emotion. People don't feel engaged and they certainly don't feel as if they're part of the story. Before you can learn how to properly tell a story with conversations, you have to know how not to do it. What you just saw was how not to do it. If you want to inject life into your stories and make them more of an experience, don't relay information. Have characters use dialogue, words that they would say to bring the story to life. In tomorrow's video, you'll hear a much more dynamic version of the story that I just told you. But for right now, just know that as you're crafting your stories, ask this question, where can I use dialogue? Where can I have this character say in his or her own words what he's feeling, or what she thinks should happen, or what the expectation is. Be sure to tune in tomorrow and you'll see an excellent example of that. See you in our next Daily Dose of Public Speaking Wisdom.